Last night I saw Blade Runner 2049, it was pretty damn great. I saw the movie in a rickety old cinema with Art Deco stylings here and there. Run down and decaying, a cinema that looked like it could star in Blade Runner. The seats were nice and new though, thankfully. But I'm not here to talk about the comfy seats I sat on, I'm here to talk about the movie. I'm going to have to include what you may or may not consider spoilers in revealing the basic plot, but I won't reveal any of the twists or anything like that, so don't worry. Ryan Gosling plays the main character, a replicant police officer whose initial name is a code designation that begins with K, and Gosling brings his usual autistic intensity to the part. I think he's mentioned before that during the movie Drive he was going for a man with no name performance, but he has this kind of bug-eyed look that makes him look like he's got Asperger's, trust me I'd know, which actually works in Drive where the character is supposed to be a weirdo, and works here where he's supposed to be a replicant. K is actually a competent detective, and as a replicant, is of course tough as nails, but he's kind of innocent and immature on an emotional level, which also fits with him being a replicant, and because of that it helps that Ryan Gosling is playing him, as I said. The main plot revolves around the idea that replicants can give birth, which is something they're not supposed to do. Something they're not supposed to be, something they're not supposed to be able to do. Replicants are, of course, a form of slave labour, and second class citizens, to be terminated if they step outside of parameters. This brings in two initial parties, the police and the corporate interests. Without spoiling the details, the initial discovery is of a skeleton that shows signs of birth trauma and a caesarean being performed. Kay's police chief wants him to hunt down all further evidence that a replicant has given birth and destroy it, because she believes that if replicants can give birth, this dissolves one of the main societal barriers between replicants or skin jobs as the derogatory term goes, and human beings. Her job is to keep order. In Kay's view it would mean that replicants have a soul. The, I think it was called, the, the Wallace Corporation, headed by, I don't remember his first name, but Mr Wallace, has long sought the ability to have replicants give birth as it would allow him to expand the pool of off-world disposable labour to a far greater scale. He wants to find the still living child and probe the secret of what mutation allowed this to happen. The third party is an underground replicant resistance movement that sees this birth as a miracle that can allow them to build an army to fight a revolutionary war for the rights of replicants. So that's the ground level plot of this new movie, minus any of the twists and reveals. There's also a subplot in which Kay's character has a cutie pie hollow girlfriend, Joy. It actually works and it's kind of touching. It's tret as if she's his real girlfriend with the technical limitations only standing in their way and needing to be navigated around to fulfil their relationship. She's also a willful character and assists in Kay's mission, which is interesting considering that she's ultimately a corporate product. It helps add some humanity to Kay, who comes to believe that he might be the missing child, as he hunts down the truth of whether his memories are mere replicant implants or real memories. There's one Black Mirror-esque moment that's darkly amusing and a little sad at the same time, where a loving moment with his girlfriend is completely paused by an incoming call from the police chief, leaving her frozen in the rain mid-kiss. Kay's police chief Joshi is played competently, but I don't have much to say about her, other than that in spite of needing to keep order, she seems to have a soft spot for Kay, thinking he's done alright for not having a soul. And this may extend to replicants in general in some way. Regardless, she's part of the system that keeps them in place. In the corporate faction, we have the big leader Wallace, with his weird straggly hair and robo eyes. I think this is one of the few things I have to complain about, he really comes across as a self-aware villain from a much cheaper action movie, which is just wrong for Blade Runner. Think back to Tyrell, the corporation might have been evil or whatever, but Tyrell himself didn't delight in being an evil baddie doing as much bad things as possible in order to be booed by the pantomime audience, but that's kind of who Wallace is here. The thing is that if you wanted him to be creepy and awful, it would come across a lot better if he was matter of fact about things in that kind of corporate way, rather than sadistic. You know, a business leader rather than this Charles Manson looking motherfucker. I get that replicants are disposable, but it starts with expositional sadism and is ultimately highlighted in a comically disposable fashion in the last scene with Wallace. Wallace's henchwoman Love, meanwhile, actually works and is one of the few female villains I've seen that is genuinely able to provide a sense of menace. As for the resistance faction, apart from Deckard returning and Harrison Ford giving a solid if straightforward performance, the characters are kind of minor, with the one-eyed leader woman just moving the plot along again once she appears. 
The prostitute character is more important, I suppose, but she only serves a part in a strange love scene that serves to highlight Joy's willful nature and for plot reasons so that a tracking device can be planted on Kay by the Resistance. Deckard has one standout great moment relating to a replicant clone of his beloved Rachel that I won't spoil with specifics. The thing this movie does really well is expand on the universe of Blade Runner, making it feel much larger. You wouldn't want to live there, but it sure would be cool to visit. As we catch up to it, its existence as an alternate timeline becomes more and more blatant. With a brief advertisement showing that the USSR still exists and has presumably gone state-directed capitalist like China and is selling products to the West. Little details like this are cool and we can see Atari advertisements and so on in the typical hologram Blade Runner fashion if we look about in the background. But it's not all rain-swept neon and ziggurats, we also get to see some abandoned areas of the old world. One interesting setting in particular being a great junk city with pieces of carved up ships. It's a visually stunning movie, and not only because of special effects, but because the cinematography and the framing of shots is handled perfectly. There's some good rule of third stuff with characters right on either side of the frame and this empty space between them. Lighting is also excellent, we don't just get the blue of the city, but there's also a lot of yellow light, particularly inside Wallace's building. It gives a kind of sickly look. It reminds me of the colour scheme employed in the Blade Runner inspired video game Deus Ex Human Revolution. I can't comment on the original or later games. So yeah, I thought the movie was great and any problems I have with it are minor. It's a long running time at 163 minutes, but the original Blade Runner was short um, while being slower, so it doesn't feel so long comparatively. I would give it a very good rating out of perfect. Go see it, or don't. Haha. <laughs>